This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, it's The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm Ramsey personality George Campbell, joined today by the infamous Dr. John Deloney, host of The Dr. John Deloney Show, best-selling author, and we are here to take your calls. Open phones this hour, 888 5225 We'll talk about money, relationships, what you're stressed out about around the holidays, your mental health, anxiety, emergency funds, debt, you name it. We are here for you, John. No, we're not here for you. We're here for That's them. That's I'm talking about. Comma, John. I'm here for you, George. Thank you. And we're here for them. I appreciate that. How's your Friday going? It's good, man. You've got you've got some book deadlines coming up, don't we you? Are, we are cranking it. Does it yes. feel like high school again where you're cramming for the big test? Except in high school, nobody reads your papers. Oh, and this one this is like... This is a paper that millions of people read. A little different. Yeah, it's a little different. A little more puckered up. But we'll get there. We'll, we'll get good. there. All right. Let's go to the phones. We've got Gene in Rochester, New York. Gene, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi, thank you for taking my call. Can you hear me okay? You sound great. How can we help? Okay. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of a backstory. I'm 65 years old and retired. I don't owe any money. Um, I have about 3000 a month in bills and um, giving, and I my total income coming in is 5300 I only have 43000 in an IRA. And I want to continue to invest so that I can offset the cost of living when I'm older. I'm wondering if you could give me some guidance on how much I should be putting away. Absolutely. Well, you've got some leftover money. So you're, you're in a good spot here with just having some excess. So your bills and expenses are 3000 and you have 5300 coming in. So you have excess of 2300 freed up right now? That's correct. Where do you get, where do you get that 5000 bucks? What are you doing? Oh, um, that's a combination of pension and Social Security. Outstanding. Good. Okay, good, good, good. And you're wondering, hey, how can I invest this excess so that I can use it in retirement and live into my 90s? I'd like to know how much of it because some of it I want to have a little fun with, and um, but I know I need to put some of it away. So I'm wondering what a good ratio would be. Yeah, like well, 50-50, it, it really depends on your lifestyle, your comfort level. Uh, it sounds like these 3,000 expenses, it's going to stay like this. Do you have a, you, you said you don't have any debt. Do you have a mortgage or anything like that? No, I've paid everything off. Wow. Gene, way, way to go. go. <laughs> Thanks. I feel pretty good about it. You should. You should be smiling from ear to ear. This is awesome. It was a long haul. Yes, I'm really happy about it. Thank you. Well, when you say you want to go have some fun, what, what are you thinking of? What kind of fun you want to have? Uh, I'd like to take vacations, which I haven't done in a long time, uh, and, you know, uh, buy things for the house, go out with my friends, just things like that. I love it. Well, this is going to be a line item in your budget, and so decide, hey, how much do I want to set aside for vacations? Let's say that number is 5000 6000 How much do I think I'll spend, you know, going out each month with friends or whatever those things might be, and make that a line item in your budget. And then the rest of it, I want you to be investing. You can invest into that uh, IRA continually so that it can, continues to grow, and you can eventually pull money from that when you need it. But right now, you have this guaranteed income, so you've got a good situation here. You may not need to touch the retirement money for a long, long time, it sounds like. That's what I was thinking, that I could perhaps put 1000 a month away um, and then – Use it in the future to just draw off a little bit, you know, to offset cost of living as I'm 75, 85. Yeah, that's $12,000 a year. And if you get a rate of return of, you know, 10, 11% on that and some good growth stock mutual funds and an IRA, then you'll be able to pull from that later on in life if you need to. And right now you have $5,300 forever guaranteed, right? Right. That's okay. correct. Well, you're, well, you're in good shape. Unless they mess around with social security and it drops. <laughs> oh, that's true. You never know these days. You know, well, there's that. We, we and, usually tell people oh, to split ahead. it in those three categories. You're already doing giving and that's already in your budget. And the other two are spend and save. 
And so you're saying it right here. I want to have some fun. I don't want you to just invest every single penny. You're not in a destitute situation. So have some fun. Go on some vacations, but be wise about the ratio. There's no exact ratio. I'm going to tell you, hey, do 50% here, 50% there. But just feel it out and go, is this in line? Should I be going on a $50,000 trip? Maybe not. But can I go on a $5,000 trip? Sure. And if you do it all with cash okay. and you don't go into debt, you've put yourself in a fantastic position that most people your age have not. And so you have the benefit of having a little bit of freedom here. All right. That sounds good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks so much for the call, Gene. All right. Let's go to John in Chicago, Illinois. John, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi. How are you guys doing? Doing great. How can we help? Um, so my question is, uh, like, because right now I work a job that – pay the mortgage and, you know, I can use that to start the baby steps, but it's not really, you know, I don't really feel like super happy about it. So I've been talking to some of my contractors that services my buildings and they, some, well, one of the guys said he will vouch for me to get into a labor union to become like an electrician or like HV, HVAC. And I'm wondering if, cause I don't want to use his, him vouching for me and just kind of let it go. But if I do do it seriously, should I get into that and, you know, risk me, you know, having a pay cut for at least two years because I'm going to be an apprentice for at least two years? And but What kind of future, pay cut are we talking? What are you making now and what would you go down to? Well, right now I make 25 and he was saying that apprentices right now make around 15. Is that per hour? Uh, yes. Okay. So that that's a big jump to be going down ten dollars an hour from twenty five to fifteen for two years. What are your family responsibilities right now financially? Uh, well, I'm the bread giver. Um, my uh, well, I guess my girlfriend. She well, we have three kids together, and um, she got a job being uh, like a kinder care teacher. Mm -hmm. But um, I pay for most of the bills, and I live a very normal life, and I'm trying to get out of that. But I want to make sure that I can at least give my kids the best opportunities that they can when they grow up before I'm 30 and I'm 28. 28 now. So I'll tell you, I have taken a pay cut at multiple in multiple steps of my career, making good money, step back to whether it's because I was changing a location um, and I had growth potential there or I was going to enter into a training program. I was going to go to grad school. I was going to go to another grad school, whatever that looked like. I've done that multiple times. It's worked out every single time for me that that was a good financial move. Um, and every time I made one of those moves, it also had family implications too. Um, it's really going to, as far as I know, man, it's, it's going to depend on... Can you guys afford to take this cut? Can you pay your bills and eat? Will your wife work two or three jobs on top of what she's already doing so that you can go to do this apprenticeship debt-free and then you can cross that line? I don't have any problem with you taking a break for a couple of years to make less money, to get trained up, to go make more money at another job. But man, you gotta be smart and don't go into any more debt. Yeah, clean up this mess, stick with this job until you have the financial freedom to make a jump like that. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com.
right, guys, the Christmas countdown is on, and we are having a great time handing out cash as part of our Christmas cash giveaway. It's one of my spiritual gifts to give away Dave's money. And if you didn't know, giving is some of the most fun you'll ever have with money. And every year here at Ramsey Solutions, we celebrate Christmas with our Ramsey Show listeners with an awesome tradition, our Ramsey Christmas Cash Giveaway. And this year, we're giving away $500 every single week and a grand prize of $5,000. You can enter every single day to increase your chances of winning. Just go to RamseySolutions.com slash giveaway. And look, we know you're planning to do a lot of giving too. That's why our team has put everything on sale. We've extended our biggest Cyber Monday sale till to last till the end of the week. So you can get up to 79% off right now. We've got special deals for everyone on your list. It's the perfect day to get Christy Wright's 2022 Goal Planner, John Deloney's Conversation Cards, Question for Humans, and Ken Coleman's Career Assessment because these are the lowest prices you're going to see all year. So hurry up, get gifts for your friends and family, maybe even yourself, because our sale ends real soon. Shop our biggest Cyber Monday sale yet at our online store at RamseySolutions.com. Open phones this hour, 888-825-5225. I'm George Campbell, joined today by my colleague, John Deloney. We're taking your calls. And Tobias is on the line in Trenton, New Jersey. Tobias, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? How can we help? Great. Uh, so I inherited money when I was a young boy, and uh, now it, it was put in mutual funds for me, and now it's it got about $80,000 in there, and I'm looking to buy a house somewhat in the near future. I want to know if I should continue contributing to that. So you've been contributing to this mutual fund on top of what was inherited? No. Oh, Okay. So where are you at financially? How old are you, and do you have any debt currently? I don't have debt. I'm debt-free, um, and i um, 27 years old. Awesome. Do you have an emergency fund of three to six months saved? Yes. Fantastic. And that's outside of all of the, all the inheritance you have here. Tobias, man, you're crushing it, brother. Good Way for you, go. man. Thank you. So you want to use this money to possibly buy your first home? Correct. And you're in New Jersey. Have you looked around to see what houses cost around there? Yeah, it's pretty crazy here, just like the rest of the world. But uh, is it like three, four hundred grand? What are you looking at right now? Yeah, some, uh, yeah, around four or four fifty. Okay. And what's your income? Uh, fifty thousand dollars. Fifty k. Well, that 80K could be a good down payment, and I'll give you some parameters so that you make the right decision here. And what we recommend is that you save up that down payment to be about 10 or 20% of the value of the home. I love 20% because that helps you avoid PMI, private mortgage insurance, which is money that protects them, not you. It protects the lender. And so if you can get to that point where that 80K is 20%, and here's the other factor, I want the I want you to get a 15-year fixed-rate mortgage, no more than that, where the payment is no more than a quarter of your take-home pay. So crunch some numbers on that $50,000 that you make. What do you actually take home? Divide that into four, and that's what you can afford based on the down payment. So that might mean you take that 80 k and you save some money on top of that to get to the number that's comfortable for you. Okay. I know know that you guys don't say to invest in the the market – short term, less than three to five years. So I'm wondering if I should contribute to this fund so it could grow more before I do yeah, end up what's the Yeah, what's the time horizon? Are you looking to do this in the next one or two years, or is this four, five, six years uh, from now? Uh, two to three years is the time horizon. Yeah. Under three years, I get a little hesitant because there's a lot that could happen in the market, and there's a chance that it could dip. And so if, you're, if you've got a set timeline for this, that's a little bit risky to be putting in the market. I mean, your mutual funds are already in the market. So I don't mind you contributing to this to add to it and watching it grow, but I'd give it three plus years. And at that point, you could have you know, 100, 150 grand in there, which is going to give you a great down payment. And uh, it'll with 50k income you'll actually be able to afford a mortgage payment in new jersey which is pretty cool well and just you you can put it in that account when i when i was going to buy a house that there was about two years i had lead time i just went open an account at a credit union man and my goal wasn't to make a bunch of money on the cash it was just to store it in a safe place until i was ready to use it all you know what i mean yeah so, so i should take it out 
I would leave it in there for now, but when like what John is saying is once you get close, you're like, hey, I'm within a year of getting this house. I would cash it out and put it in a money market account, a high yield savings account, just park it somewhere safe that you have access to, to where it's not in the market, to where it's not, um, you know, subject to all the risk. All right, thank you. Yeah, thanks so much for the call, man. Appreciate it. Lori joins us in Dayton, Ohio. Lori, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? Doing great. How can we help today? Well, um, I have a question really about budgeting and saving for like big ticket items or, or retirement. We, uh, we don't have any debt, awesome. um, but we just, we just have a hard time. We pay cash for everything, but we just seem to have a hard time like buckling down and getting that savings in the bank like we need to. For the big ticket items. So you're talking about like yeah. a sinking fund where you say, all right, we need to save $600. We're going to save 100 a month for six months. But, well, it's our emergency fund, and my husband has his own business, so we don't have health insurance. And you don't have health insurance right now. No. Oh boy, this you just got a new priority <laughs> today yeah. on this Friday afternoon. <laughs> when you when you say when a couple, ever a couple says we we are just really struggling, is it you? Is it him? One of you is probably no. on board, and one of you is probably a little bit wheeling and dealing. No, no, we're no, we're both on board. Okay. We are, but I mean, we have been had health insurance for well since our young since my nineteen year old was a year and a half. And wow. you were playing roulette. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but when it comes to, it comes to budgeting, who blows the budget? Well, I would say we just have a lot of expenses, and we. Um, we had some, uh, a couple of financial, we've had to start over pretty much like two times. Mm-hmm. And I, I think we just kind of were like deer in the headlights, you know? And so we just kind of like don't know what to do, so we just don't do anything. What kind of budget are you guys doing right now? Are you using every dollar? Are you doing an Excel spreadsheet? Is this on paper? It's, it's on paper. And I, yeah, I, I, I do it. I basically do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we've got everything on automatic payment, you know. You're saying whatever happens on paper does not match reality. I'm just saying there's really just not a I, – I just don't know what to do. So here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do, Lori. Um, sometimes mm-hmm. when we have major life events, major setbacks, mm-hmm. or when life just control alt deletes us. Right. We have a plan. Mm-hmm. We're moving along down the road. All of a sudden, it just rattles our cage. Whatever happens. The car falls mm-hmm. apart. Kid gets sick. Husband passes away. Whatever it is. Uh, that What you said, you described it perfectly, that deer in headlights. That's, that's a neurological issue. Your brain just goes into neutral for a season. It's called grief. Mm-hmm. Okay? Here's what I want you and your husband to do. I want you all to go out together. Okay, you can go to breakfast together. I like that. Our friend Anthony loves dinner. Whatever it is, you all go by yourself and plan to spend a few hours. And I want you to take a notepad, and I want you to look at each other and be honest and have no electronics. And I want you to Mm -hmm. talk about and write down, get out of your head, and put on Mm -hmm. paper, here's our frustrations. Here's the milestones we missed. Here's where I'm getting stuck. Here's where I feel like I can't move. I want you to get it out of your body, get out of your head, get out of your heart, get it onto paper so you can look at it. Mm-hmm. And then when I want okay. you, when you write these stories down, whatever these stories happen to be, I want you to demand evidence from these stories. Is this true? Are we really never going to be able to get back on track? No, you can't. Am I really the worst spender ever? Nope. I had a bad couple of years, and tomorrow everything changes. And I want you to come up with a new plan together on paper. You're all going to commit at this dinner. This is the moment that we change everything. And then you're going to go get health insurance, for God's sake. Mm -hmm. Hey, Lori, hang on. I'm going to have Austin, our phone screener, pick up and give you guys a year to Ramsey Plus. That's going to give you access to every dollar, our budgeting tool, and Financial Peace University. Go through the videos, do the budget with him, get on the same page, and you guys will find some progress. Thanks for calling in.
If you're ready to get out there and find a job you love, then you need to hear this. Job hunting can be stressful and time consuming, but my friends at ZipRecruiter have made the whole job search way easier. ZipRecruiter is rated the number one job site in the US by G2 and it's free. So how does it work? First, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Then create a free profile and let their technology do the hard work by finding and sending you jobs that are a great fit. And get this, ZipRecruiter pitches your profile to companies whose jobs match your skills and experience. If someone from that company likes your profile, they can personally invite you to apply for the job. So if you're ready for an easier job search, check out ZipRecruiter. Sign up for free right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Sign up today absolutely free and let ZipRecruiter work for you. I'm George Campbell, joined today by my co-host, John Deloney. This is The Ramsey Show. And on the debt-free stage in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions, Zach and Jessica join us. How are you guys? Good. Good. You look like a debt-free couple to me. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Where are you guys from? Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Wonderful. Well, thanks for making the trip to Nashville to do your debt-free scream. Thank you. Let's get into this. How much have you paid off? $222,000. What? You look like you're 17. What do you mean? <laughs> That's amazing. How did you have that much time to rack it up? That's impressive. Okay. <laughs> How long did it take? Um, four years and nine months. Wow. Okay. And your range of income during that time? I uh, started at 60 and then made our way to 142. Whoa. Did someone get a job? This guy. Hey. <laughs> yeah, he did. You got totally two redeemed yourself. Way to go, man. <laughs> Who's got two thumbs and got a job? This guy. You were waiting on that, Jessica, weren't you? <laughs> what do you guys do for a living? Um, I'm a mortgage loan advisor, and um, Jess is a doctor of physical therapy. Wow. wow. Both of y'all have been pretty bored the last two years. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Very impressive. Congratulations, good folks. Thanks. So what type of debt was this? Mostly student loans from the doctorate. Ah. Mm -hmm. So yep. is that all you then? Yeah. Nice. I like how you waited till she answered that question. <laughs> that was well I'll let her take this well. Yeah. Did you have any part in the debt here? Um, I, I um, said yes to getting a car that we couldn't afford and oh. put some money on a credit card that we didn't have. So, so there's a little bit of, of car loan, credit cards on here. Mm -hmm. Totally yep. normal. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Okay. So we got to get into this. Four years and nine months ago, you guys were sitting there with $220,000. And you decided, nah, we're not going to live like this anymore. What happened? Um, so as we were going through school, we actually had some friends who are here with us today. And they um, explained how they paid off their debt with Ramsey's uh, just baby steps. And so we knew as soon as school ended that um, that was what we wanted to do, that we weren't going to wait. That we were going to pay them off as quickly as we could. So uh, we didn't really know what that was going to look like or how long, but we had a slogan that we were going to be debt free by 33. Um, nice. And so, but then as it kept getting closer and closer, we were like, oh man, like, okay, let's do it before we're married for 10 years, which is next December. Um, and then we were like, I think we can be done before the end of this calendar year and um, just. And the numbers never added up to us. It was that's how we knew like it was God working was that it just didn't make sense on paper how it was getting paid and it just mm. the snowball works. So how old are you? Wow. Thirty one. Uh, yeah, thirty one. Whoa. Wow. It so, doesn't rhyme, see, but I'll yeah. take it. Two yeah. years <laughs> early. Debt is done by thirty one. Look yeah, at that. There we go. go. Like I'm that. a hip hop artist too. <laughs> oh gosh. We'll save that for another show. That's right. It's wow. so incredible. So who 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 sat down and started the conversation? One of you has to have the courage to say, Hey, we can't live like this. I said I took out these loans and I kept getting recommendations to apply for the the forgiveness program and um, to find a job that qualified for it. And I just said, no, like I took these out and somebody paid it. So it's our job to pay it back. And I don't know how it's going to work, but 
we're going to do it. Zach, you married well, my brother. Yes, I That's did. That's a woman of integrity. <laughs> That's awesome, This is incredible. Man. Thank you. So, so what did that journey look like for you guys four years and nine months? Were there sacrifices? What kind of things did you do to actually get out of or debt? Or not do. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we moved back from California, which is where Jess went to school. We knew that we wanted to move home to Indiana just for you know, yeah. living expenses are a lot cheaper there. Um, moved in immediately with my parents. We didn't buy a house right away. Um I used VA benefits when we actually did get the the house to make sure that we were in a good loan and everything like that. And then um, lots of... We just of, said no to a lot of things. <laughs> lots of no's after that. Lots of not traveling, not um, getting new cars and, and that sort of stuff like that. So Our cars together are over 600,000 miles. So that's our, next, yeah. <laughs> that's our next step is saving up for a new car. But right now they're both still working. So... That's we're driving amazing. them. Yeah. So what, what is it like pulling up to like the rehab center mm-hmm. next to all those incredible cars? Yeah. And yours has got green smoke coming out the back of it. Like, <laughs> I know. I keep telling my coworkers, I'm like, it's worth it. It's so worth it. And I have a couple that did it before me. And we have a couple that are, they're just not sure that they can do it. But we're like, no, you can. Like, it's- So it doesn't even phase you. No. Good for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so did people think you were crazy? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Plenty of people, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of friends, coworkers. In, in the mortgage industry, people, yeah. you're, you're paying off your debt while you're... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's um, that's one of the things I get a lot is, I mean, hey, you, you're doing pretty well. Why don't you buy a new car? Your, your car has 400,000 miles on it, you know? It, I was like, hey, it's only a seven-minute drive. If I break down, <laughs> I can walk. I'm good. Um, but, yeah, it is a lot of, hey, what are you going to use that next bonus check on? What are you going to do for this? And I was like, well, our plan, you know, before we got debt-free was, hey, well, we want to put this much towards debt this month. We want to put that much towards debt this ne- this coming month. And so a lot of people were just like, man, what? Well, why are you working so hard? Like, cause we want to be done with this. Yeah. And it's, it's wow. just one of those things where getting to talk to people about mortgages and how you can, you know, use that as a tool to help people get out of debt. I tell so many people on the phones about the snowball method. It's so fun. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's man. awesome. Yep. So you guys were on this journey for a long time. Yeah. Did you ever feel like, I don't know, like we, let's slow this down or did you only just ramp up and get more excited? Yeah. There were definitely moments where we were like, Oh man, I don't know. Like it, we definitely feel like God's blessing this journey, but is, this is hard. And the podcast, the Dave Ramsey podcast is honestly like, that's what we would always go to. Like we would go on a run, put on the podcast and like just listen to the stories of people that did it. And we actually had two classmates who also did the debt free scream and we just would listen to their story and like, okay, we can do this. And we have a bunch of like classmates that we graduated with that we're all kind of doing it together. And so when we see them, we, we check in with each other, like, how's it going? And we all have young kids too. So we're kind of in the same phase of life and that, that helped a ton. I saw those wow. those two beautiful kids on the screen in here. Yes. So what's it, what's what's it like in your souls thinking that understanding that they're never going to understand uh, what y'all went through? Yeah, that that guilt, that shame, that pie, you know, just being under that big blanket. Yeah, the weight. I mean, for us it's a big tool that we can use to un- explain the gospel to them too, mm-hmm. how God paid our debt and just for them to change their like to never know that, right? To just do things completely different, to do it weird, right? Like yeah. to not be normal and um, yeah, just to change our family tree. That was kind of the big thing we had kept going back to was we want the girls to live differently than, than we did. Hmm. What an incredible couple. I'm so awesome, proud of you guys. Thank you. Made my day better. <laughs> I know. They just, it really did. Cheer up and, my spirit uh, here. Off air, if you could talk to George, you mentioned that you run. He's not big into exercise, but maybe you can teach him a few things. <laughs> we'll we'll I paid my debt. I'm not running anymore, John. I'm good. <laughs> well, we've got a copy of Dave's new book, Baby Steps Millionaires. That's the next chapter in your story. I mean, you guys are 31 years old, completely debt-free, incredible income. You got these sweet little kids. You guys are going to be millionaires before you know it. Yeah. That's incredible. We also have a copy of the Total Money Makeover so that you can pass it along and maybe get one of those people who thought you were crazy (laughs) on board to do this plan. Get them running and listening to the Ramsey Show podcast. Thank you. Thank you. This is fantastic. Well, let's get to it. The moment we've all been waiting for, Zach and Jessica from Indianapolis $220,000 $220,000 paid off in four years and nine months, making 60 up to $142,000. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, two one. one. We're, We're debt-free! debt-free! Yeah! Woo! Look at those smiling faces. Unbelievable. Man, that didn't that just warm your heart? 
yeah, they're just dude. an incredible couple. I'm like, I feel like I'm not a good person after talking with people like that. They're just they, they're they are ten years ahead of me when it comes to maturity. maturity wise. Yes, maturity. <laughs> Most children are. They're mar- that's very fair. Well played. Um, <laughs> but they are incredible. They, yeah, the fact they they, I mean, they dug themselves a big hole and then they had the courage to call reality reality and say we got to do something about this and then they man they worked for four years and made it happen yeah most people in their 20s they've got two hundred twenty thousand dollars in debt they just go yeah i mean it's not real it's monopoly it's money. monopoly money yeah. well you know we'll go to the grave with the student loans we'll just bank on forgiveness for the next decade and they just decided to make Done. a choice and it's i love what she said i took that loan out it was up to me to pay that loan back i, I remember feeling that exact same thing that level of personal responsibility yeah. is huge it's awesome man super proud of you guys zach and jessica wait to go. This is The Ramsey Show. Open phones this hour, 888-825-5225. I'm George Camel, joined today by Dr. John Deloney. Give us a call about your life, your money, your mental health, your relationships. Whatever you want to talk about, we are here for you. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. Today's question comes from Hannah in Maryland. uh, Hannah asks, how do I guide my boyfriend in making a pivotal career move? I could just stop you right there and say you don't, but we'll continue. He's 32 and in residency. Most doctors go for clinical careers, but his passion lies in medical research. The problem, oh, this is great. The problem is that a career in medical research pays significantly less than a clinical career. Research grants pay about 60 grand a year and allow you to do clinical work making up to another $100,000 a year. A strictly clinical career starts at about 300,000 and goes up from there. If money was not a factor, he would choose the research career. He has $500,000 in student loans. We'd like to get married and have a big family someday. How do I help him make sense of what he would be giving up by going with the lower paying option? How does one weigh their passions with what makes financial sense? Is this a case where passion needs to be thrown by the wayside? There's so much here. There's a lot going on, John. I'll let you go first. Hannah, you have already spent $500,000 of your future husband's first year salary. You've already spent it. You know what the house is going to look like, the cars. You already have the picture in your head of how many kids you'll have and what they'll all be doing in the big house that you'll have on the acres and the wherever and wherever and wherever. This is less a question about your hus- about your boyfriend's passion and more a question about do you love him enough to follow him into what he wants to do with his life or do you love him because he's going to make you a whole, whole, whole bunch of money? Now, he's racked up 500 grand of student loans. Right now, he, because y'all aren't married, he has a, a problem. He dug himself a big old hole. So if he was to call in the show, I would tell him. Um, it sounds like I would do both. I would be exhausted and do a clinical career and do research on the side until I could get this thing paid off and then lean over. And if he really wants to do research, you can do both. In fact, I think... The true res- the, the researchers of the most validity are those who are also seeing patients. Um, that's a whole other conversation. But yeah, he's going to have to figure that out financially. But that's not the question you're asking. The question you're asking is, can I marry somebody who doesn't make that much money? Mm. 
Yeah, it feels to me that there's there's a security thing here of well, if I marry someone who makes three hundred thousand, I'd feel a lot better than if they made one hundred sixty. I don't even see it as a security issue as much as a she's living in a she's got a fantasy. Yeah, and you may have you may have put your time in, you may have invested in this guy because he had, was going to be a big fish, but oof. I mean, 160k is still a great salary, and I'd rather be married to someone who loves what they do every day and comes home with something left in the tank than someone who goes, I hate this, but I'm glad we make good money. Yeah, so I'm heading off to a thing that I hate and hope you enjoy spending it. And again, there's much more at play here, Hannah. You've got to ask yourself, can I be with a guy who only makes a, only makes 160? Most people are rolling their eyes going, oh my gosh, it's 160 grand. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it, yeah. Knucklehead's got $500,000 in student loans. He's going to have to solve that problem. But you need to have a broader conversation about, is this the guy that you want to be married to? Can you slum it with a guy that just makes 160? And you all need to be serious about planning what your finances are going to look like. And when it comes to a budget and... All those realistic things, but you can't. How do I guide my boyfriend making a pure, pivotal career move away from his passion and what he wants to do that's going to make him six figures into how much money it's going to cost me? me. Yeah. Yep. Oof. Well, thanks for the question, Hannah. Appreciate that. Let's go to the phones this hour. Brendan joins us in Chicago, Illinois. Brendan, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. How can um, we help? My question is today. My question today is um, my wife of 16 years and I have decided that we're going to separate. Oh, and man, um, we we just recently went over the finances and we want to just split everything 50-50, including uh, uh, seeing the children. And she, we see that um, I should be able to get about $325,000. And I wanted to know if I should, when I move out, because she's going to keep this house, if I should just buy a house outright or just pay for a half and save the rest or what I should do. Do you have, well, let me back up. Number one, 16 years, man. Um, how are y'all doing? That's a big deal. Yeah. Um, our, our, our relationship has been pretty bad for the past couple of years. Okay. Um, I think she was just tired of being, I guess, unhappy. So okay. she just wants to try to move on. I'm sorry. I know that um, this happens all the time, and we think we've just become numb to it and normed, but uh, this is a big deal. Are y'all separating for a season, or is that a nice way of saying she's filed for divorce and y'all are getting officially divorced, legally divorced? So I asked I asked her that the other day, and I think right now we're just going to separate um, and not immediately get a divorce, but it may lead to that. Um, like I said, she's been unhappy for many years, she said, so I'm not sure where it's going to lead. So I want you guys – have you all gone to mediation? Have you all sat down with somebody? No, not yet. Okay. Um, I, so, don't, I don't know. She wants to avoid seeing a lawyer, so I'm not sure. Of course. It sounds like she that. wants to avoid all of it. She likes – she wants to just – she wants to play divorced and have the benefits of – what she thinks are the benefits of divorce without the reality of it, without the finality of it, without the pain of it. And yeah, per- perhaps. Yeah, I, it, yeah. And so she wants to avoid any professionals telling her, "Yeah, you got to make a decision. If you're going to split your family up, then you can't you can't string that thing along. You got little ones too." Yeah, we got a 14 year old and a nine year old, both girls. Yeah, brother, they can't. Don't don't put them through that. Through a maybe or a uh, we'll see and a uh, well you know don't do that to them. And I, I know I'm 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 preaching to the choir here. I know you've had that conversation, um, dude. If you're if you're not officially divorced, legally divorced, you you don't buy nothing. Mm-hmm. Do you have three hundred twenty five thousand dollars that she's just gonna write you a check? I mean, how y'all gonna split that up without selling your house? Yeah, yeah, it's cash, it's cash assets. Okay. Yeah. I, I, um, if if I'm you, the I wouldn't really. Is, Go ahead. I I work part time right right now only because um, that's what I've been doing the last year and a half, and she's kind of the breadwinner of the family, so. I wanted to make sure I can afford something as well. Yeah, so you've got legal rights, you've got alimony rights, and that's to say she's wanting both sides of – she wants to you know, have her cake and eat it too. She, she, you need to go talk to somebody, okay? Yeah, okay. And um, it sounds like you're about to get taken advantage of. And ultimately, at the end of the day, my brother um, – if you were, if, if this was a clean divorce, she was going to hand you three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars in cash and send you on your way. I would tell you don't buy anything for at least a year. 
You're going to have okay. to grieve this, mourn this, figure out what's next. You're going to have to get a full-time job. It may not even end up being in this town, even though you want to see your kids. The whole thing, man, your whole life is okay. going to have to have to control all delete, right? So uh, don't buy anything. Don't lock yourself into anything. Even though you got that money sitting there, don't let it burn a hole in your pocket. Go slow. Grieve this thing. Talk to somebody. Make sure you got friends in your life. Spend really direct quality no screens, time with your kids, and you're going to have a season of healing, right? Am I right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So uh, are you recommending that I, I for sure just uh, make sure to see a lawyer? If I'm you, I would I would have a lawyer on the phone by Monday morning at 9 o'clock in the morning. Absolutely. No question, okay. no ifs, ands, or buts. Especially if you've been stay at home while she's been working, you helped when she was in grad school or whatever, you know. Um yeah, it's pretty convenient to just say, hey, I just want you to move out, and I'll write you a check to move out. But we're not going to do anything official um, because then I'm going to have to come up with a yeah. lot more money. Yeah, this, this divorce turns this thing into a transaction. I want to make sure that you're protecting yourself as well here. But, yeah, rent for a year, like John said. Take it easy. Don't make any big financial decisions right now. And uh, we're, we're rooting for you, man. I'm sorry you're going through this. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. My thanks to my co-host, Dr. John Deloney, our phone screener, Austin Selby. Our fill-in producer here, Ben Hill, doing a great job. James Childs sitting in as well. And you, America, thanks for listening. We can't do this without you. We'll be back with you before you know it. Until then, spend wisely, save intentionally, and give generously. This is James Childs, producer of The Ramsey Show. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Subscribe or follow today wherever you listen to podcasts. your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, it's the Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm George Campbell, joined today by Ramsey personality, Dr. John Deloney, and we're here to take your calls. The number is 888-825-5225. We can talk about your life, your money, your relationships, holiday spending, how to get the best deal, how to fix broken relationships, and maybe get rid of some anxiety around the holidays, some of the baggage that's going on. I can't imagine, John, all of the people going to their families and not excited about it. You know what I – yeah, there's definitely that, especially when it comes to Christmas. But I heard something this year that I haven't heard ever. I've heard, I heard more people opt out, and they – when you ask them, hey, how was Thanksgiving, they were just overcome with joy. Like, I did nothing. I just had like – our neighbors came over, and we just ordered pizza. <laughs> it was amazing. Or we cooked, and it was low-key, and – I. I, I, I've not heard that level. Usually it's like, oh, well, we had to drive and do this. It was fine. They're setting boundaries and making choices yeah. that are good for them. Yeah, it's love fantastic. It. Well, let's go to the phones this hour. Andrew joins us in Charlotte, North Carolina. Andrew, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, how you guys doing? Doing great. How can we help today? Okay, so um, I actually started Financial Peace University two days ago. Awesome. Um, Way to go, I'm man. On... Welcome to the gang, dude. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so I'm on Baby Step 2. And I'm a little hung up. Um, so I have thirty-three thousand dollars in debt, uh, twenty-three of which are student loans, and ten is in a uh, car. I just sold my car, um, so just kind of trying to hit, hit this as aggressively as possible. But I do have thirty thousand dollars in savings, uh, just in a, a savings account, and I'm kind of wondering how much I should throw at that debt. Um, and there's a caveat to that. I'm the only source of income for my, my house. I have two kids, and my wife stays home with uh, my young kids. So just trying to figure out how much of that I throw at that debt. Yeah. Well, you want the good news or the bad news? <laughs> I'll take the, the bad news first. They're both the same. It was a trick question. If you go through Financial Peace University, you're going to learn very quickly the baby steps. And this is what's changed 
millions and millions of lives, including families like yours, who have one income, who have kids. It's what changed my life, John Deloney's life. And here's how it works. In baby step one, you save up $1,000, and clearly you have that. You have $30,000. Here's where it gets interesting. Baby step two, we tell you to take everything but that thousand and throw it at the debt. And so for you, that means taking twenty nine thousand of your thirty and throwing it at your thirty three thousand dollars worth of debt. Now, where does that leave you? Right. It leaves you with four thousand dollars in debt and money back in your life to attack that remaining debt. So hang on one second. I, I hear it in your voice, man. That puckers you up, doesn't it? Yeah. You don't yeah, like? Yeah. You get a little nervous. Yeah, it, just um, the the fact that you know what what if I lost my job? Exactly. You know, that's, you know. it, it should. That's the point. Mm-hmm. The point is it should. It should. It, you're in a an emergency. Imagine if you lost right. your job and you got money in the bank, but you owe thirty something thousand dollars. Right. Right. You are you're living a liability. It should freak you yeah, out. That's the point. Get it done, and then sprint to get this sucker paid off and to refill that emergency fund. Gotcha. It should it should be okay, a fire sure. in your soul. My kids aren't okay because I owe other people their money, our right. money. Do you, you hear what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. And that thousand yeah, dollars that's just temporary. And right now you're gonna you're gonna be debt free within a few months. Am I wrong if you do it this mm-hmm. way? No, that'd be that'd be right. And then what you're going to do is save up that three to six months of expenses really fast. And so we're talking maybe six right. months more after that to get to that point. Right. And then if you're really puckered up, go deliver pizzas at night. Take four <laughs> months and just work like crazy. This is – think yeah. of it as the safety of your family. And by the way, what do you do for a living? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a sales manager. Are you planning on getting fired? No. <laughs> yeah, then get it done. Can you do this? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I follow-up question. Now, I am investing in my retirement because I have a match. Do you think I should stop, stop. that? Stop. Pay it off. Pay get... everything off. They're coming for you, man. They're coming stop. for you and your family <laughs> until you get it paid off. And here's the thing, Andrew. When you stop taking that match, you're going to do that for a short amount of time. It's going to drive you crazy. And I want it to drive you right. crazy. But when you go slow, you can go fast. And when you have all of your income back in your life, you can invest way more than you're currently investing. And so the math is going to work out in your favor if you do the if you do the baby steps this way. Gotcha. Thanks for the call, man. Appreciate it. Melissa joins us in Canton, Ohio. Melissa, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you so much. Thank you, George and John, for having me today on, on the air. <laughs> We're glad to have you. How can we help? Um, well, my husband and I are in baby step six. Awesome. And thank you. Um, we are super stoked about paying off our house um, as fast as possible. So um, I'm 32, he's 29, and Amazing. we both have um, full time jobs. And um, we uh, bought our house for 170000 and we still have about um, $86,000 left on the mortgage. Um, we have a, I have kind of a double question here, but um, to begin, like, we have $10,000 in a mutual fund um, in investment, and we're uh, all of a sudden, like, starting to think about that money and think, that maybe it would be smart for us to take it out and put it down right now on the house to try to lower the mortgage. But we've also considered leaving it in there um, and using it towards kind of the end of our mortgage to pay it off faster. Do you have any suggestions or um, kind of can help us with that? Um, Because we just want to get our house paid off ASAP. So I love it. Well, I love your intensity around this. Uh, you have 86 left and you have 10 and this is just sitting, this is non-retirement, right? This is just like in a general brokerage account. Correct. We have about $50,000 in retirement and my husband's contributing 15%. Awesome. Well, you're doing everything the right way. And if I'm you guys, I'm cashing this mutual fund out and slapping it on the mortgage. And when you see that progress, you're going to get a little giddy up in your step, and you're going to be even closer to paying this house off. So that's my take, and I'll tell you that as a guy who is 32 years old, and I'm 12 days away from paying off my house. What? 12 days, John. 
I, hey, so I was about to I was about to say, uh, Melissa, we're I, living parallel lives. I am I am pathological about paying my house off too. I was about to challenge George to who can get it done faster. Don't challenge me. And I'm a, <laughs> super not doing that. But hey, you said we, we, you know we've only paid off this much. You put this ten thousand dollars. You're basically halfway home. So flip it around and say I'm 32 and I've already paid off half of my house. It's this incredible. incredible. You guys are doing so great. Keep at it. Call us back when you're debt free, mortgage and everything. You guys are doing awesome. This is The Ramsey Show. On baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With health care costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. Christmas is only 22 days away. And we know you're planning to do a lot of giving this year. That's why our team has put everything on sale. We've extended our biggest Cyber Monday deal to last till the end of the week, so you can get up to 79% off right now. We have special deals for everyone on your list, which means it's the perfect day to get Christy Rice 2022 Gold Planner, my friend Dr. John Deloney's Questions for Humans conversation cards, those are super fun, and Ken Coleman's Career Assessment, and they're all the lowest prices of the year. So hurry up, get gifts for your friends and family, maybe even yourself. You can shop our Cyber Monday sale at RamseySolutions.com. And remember, we've got another fun giveaway happening, our Ramsey Christmas Cash Giveaway. This year, we're giving away $500 every single week and a grand prize of $5,000. You can enter every single day to increase your chances of winning, and you can go and do that at RamseySolutions.com slash giveaway. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, host of The Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast, joined today by Dr. John Deloney, host of The John Deloney Show. Both and your shows have different names. That's so cool. Yeah. Thank you. I tried really hard on that. You guys didn't try at all. No, I tried The Dr. John hard. Deloney Show. I just didn't have the pull you have. <laughs> I have so much creative creative pull here. Oh, man. Well, give us a call. Let's talk about your life, your money. The number is 888-825-5225. And next up, we've got Brandon in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Brandon, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Awesome. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. How are you? I'm fantastic. How can we help? It's an honor speaking to you guys. You too. Um. So I got a question. I've got a goal to become a DECA millionaire, um, and I just wanted to get your guys' insight on um, maybe what I should do. Like, I'm following the baby steps. I'm in baby steps four and six. Um, so when you're in baby step seven, you just continue to invest in um, your retirement and just cash, like use cash for everything, or do you maybe look into like run a real estate or single stocks? Um, I just wanted to get you guys an input on that. Before you answer that, George, why why a deck of millionaire? Why'd you pick that number? It's just a goal of mine. Um, I don't know. I, I just I'm an overachiever. I guess I don't know. <laughs> it's just a personal goal. How old are you? Twenty seven. Twenty seven, and you're out of debt. Do you have a mortgage currently? I do. Okay. Well, man, you're you're on track to do some big things. I mean, I think it's possible. It's a cool goal. Uh, I think what John's trying to get at is just kind of curious about the I motive, wondered, yeah, the motive behind wondered. it. Is it like was it a number? Do you want to get an airplane? Do you want to have like some? Is it a lifestyle thing for you? Neat cars? Like what do you? Yeah, what is it? Um, I think 
it, it's sort of, I guess, like, yeah, it's a, a lifestyle thing, maybe. Um, also, I just want to, like, be able to care for, like, my family, like, um, just have enough money to, I mean, one to five million is, is great. I know Dave says um, the baby steps is the quickest way to get to one to five million, and that's awesome. Um, I just, I want to, you know, I've got, like, a dream car, a dream house. I want to have another house down south. And so I guess it's just a lifestyle thing. Sure. Well, at 26, Dave tells the story, but he was bankrupt, had zero, less than, right? And now he's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. So the answer to your question is yes, you can do that following the principles. And how do you do it? That's a different question. And it sounds like you're already investing 15% of your income. How much do you make right now? Uh, 80 grand a year. Okay. And I'm pretty much at the I'm pretty much at the top of my industry, so um I wasn't sure if I had to like maybe switch careers or I'm working with a um with a investment pro. What do you do um, for work? And running the I drive a semi truck locally. And you can't make more than 80 in that industry? It's pretty much at the top. I mean, I work quite a bit of hours, like 10 to 12 hour days. Can um, you see yourself I doing this work, for 40 I, years? That's the thing is I don't I don't dislike it, but it's not like my passion. Mm-hmm. But running the numbers, like I should have three to five million in my retirement accounts by the time I retire and a pension. And so that's not bad. But I would like to get That's to, like, incredible. Million. That's it's not, not, not bad. bad. God <laughs> almighty. Yeah, we'll go slumming it with <laughs> Five million dollars in the bank. Come on, man. There's a few things you can do here. And obviously you run the numbers to see if I just invest 15% for a long period of time, multiple decades, I can get up to five million. Now there's other things you can do that we would say are wise things. Dave loves real estate. And so if you want to do some real estate investing, once you have a paid for house, you can save up with cash and do that. Do not take out more debt at that point, but that can help you build a portfolio, build that wealth to where you might have $10 million in assets. Now, can you get $10 million in cash in in your retirement account? Sure. You might need to have a a great income, max out your 401k for the next 30 years, which you could easily do, and that could give you $10 million depending on the rate of return. So what I love to do, John, is I like to go to RamseySolutions.com, and I go to the investing calculator, and it's fun to just play around with the numbers. And you go, all right, if I invest $1,000 a month for 30 years with a rate of 10%, where does that get me? Yeah. Oh, cool, that's $7 million. Yep. Okay, what if it's 11%? Oh, that's now $8 million or $9 million. What if it's not a great time and it's 7%? Okay, well, that still gives me $4 million. Yep. And so you start to play around with those numbers, and you kind of get excited, and it makes you feel like you're on track. Yeah. And so I think you aim at that, and I think if you hit $9 million, you call it good. And Brandon, let me can I, can I just be honest with you? Just love with just two dudes, not even on the radio in front of millions of people, just two guys hanging out? Yeah, absolutely. If you work for 40 years in a job you don't like and you have $3 million in your account, it won't be worth it. You've got an opportunity right now at 27 to do something that you love. What do you want to do? What would you love to do? Um, Well, I looked into doing um, being a financial like master coach training. Um, So I thought maybe I could do that and build a client base. Um, I already help people for free just because I, I love, love talking about money. Do it both. Um, do both. Do both. Or real estate. Um, do both. Yeah. Do both, my man. Because then you can you can do your trucking and you can do your driving. You've got a steady income and you've got a great opportunity to build a side hustle. And man, some of our coaching clients do incredibly well for themselves. And you begin to lean into what I was put on this planet to do. I want you to hang on the line, brother. Um, and we're going to send you a copy of our friend Ken Coleman's brand new best-selling book, From Paycheck to Purpose, about se- like se- stepping back. Dude, you're making $80,000, 27. You're killing it. You're doing great. But I, what I'm you. telling you is 40 years from now, at the end, man, if you've worked for a paycheck, man, it's great to take care of your family. I don't, I don't want to poop on $3 million for real. But, man, right now you are somebody who is thinking ahead. You're somebody who's intentional, and I want you to think about, man, if I could really lean into what I want to do. Do I want to run run my own trucking company? Do I want to run my own coaching practice? Like, what do I want to do, man? And we're going to give you that book, and it's got the steps to, to walk you through that. Is that cool? 
Awesome. I appreciate it so much. I love your podcast, by the way. I listen to that podcast as well while I'm driving. It's way just better than Georgia's, right? That, that hurts. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you, you guys both, I love both, both your podcasts. No, I mess with you. Thank you, Brandon. Hey, thanks, Brandon. Hey, I want you to keep those great goals, keep them out there, but I never want you to forget why you're chasing down that money, okay? All right. Very cool. I love it. And on top of that, on top of sending you from Paycheck to Purpose, Ken Coleman's new book, uh, we're going to get you plugged into his Get Clear assessment. And this is really going to help you dial in what was I put on this planet to do? Because that's a big question. It can get a little existential. And Ken's assessment does such a great job to just put it on paper. You get to read a sentence that can really start to point you in a direction. Um, Because you're in the trucking industry, that's a tough industry. Yep. And it's tiring. It's exhausting. You're away from your family sometimes. Obviously, you're doing it locally now, which is great. But I want you to really dig in because I think whatever you put your mind to, you're going to be great at it. You have an awesome work ethic. You're thinking ahead. And like John said, we want you to be doing something for the right reasons, something that gives you purpose, that gives you a little pep in your step in the morning. And uh, you'll get there, man. And whether it's three, five, ten million dollars, we just want you to look back and say, man, that was a great life I lived. And I want I want people listening to hear. This isn't about the dollar amount. I talked to a guy the other day that makes 48 grand, and he's looked at me and said, dude, I'm in my dream job. Dude, I was high-fiving him. It was, it was awesome. It's less about the money and more about, man, what is going to fill me up and allow me to accomplish my financial goals too. You can fill your tank and your bank account at the same time if you do, do it right. I love it. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined today by my co-host, Dr. John Deloney. And on the debt-free stage in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions, Chris and Kara join us. How are you guys? I'm doing well. We're great. Little Birdie told me you're debt-free. We We are. are. Congratulations. (laughs) Congratulations. Thank you. Where are you guys from? Uh, Well, we live in McKinney, Texas, which is about... North Dallas. Yeah. 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 About 30 minutes north Dallas. Don't get them started on Texas. (laughs) Yes. We love Texas. I know. I could see your hats and your barbecue. I'm just kidding. (laughs) That's good. But actually, I'm I'm from uh, from Franklin. I grew up here. Oh, nice. Well, welcome back home as well. So how much debt have you guys paid off? Oh, $46,500. Wow. Awesome. How long did that take? It took about 18 months. We did it in 18 months. Yep. Wow. Very well done. And what was the range of income during that time? Uh, It started out at $80,000 and then uh, up to $135,000. Heck yeah. Great income. Wow. What happened? Oh, that's a good story. You want to tell it? Well, uh, we started out probably 10 years ago with more like 80000 in debt, mm-hmm. honestly. And it's all for medical bills, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But um, when we were really able to start shoveling and making some major progress, Chris got a really great job that he loved in events. Mm-hmm. And then he lost his job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was just right after COVID hit. So, oh, of course, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. it was what the first time thing to, to go. get your dream job. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And we were finally making some progress. So that was kind of uh, killer. Yeah. But then, <laughs> you're going to let me continue? Oh, uh, we uh, kind of fell into a side hustle yeah. that ended up exploding. I was going to say, you went from 80 to 135. Yes. Yeah. What, the, what the happened? The majority of it we did while he was unemployed. What? Yes. What was the side hustle? We so, started flipping furniture. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's, it's one of those things I think it was like a God talent that he just gave us that we didn't know about right um it was probably three days after i lost my job we were kind of sitting there and just going what are we going to do and i mean we literally just sat there and prayed about it and said okay lord you know we put this in your hands and we know that you're going to lead us and guide us and he actually came through i mean just just a week later i mean it's one of those things where kara's like i tell you what um 
I've always wanted our bedroom furniture changed because it's so outdated. I mean, it's what, 18 years old yeah. mm -hmm. and it was a uh, cherry. So it's really out of style. So she's like, Hey, <laughs> why don't you, since you're not doing anything, why don't you go ahead and paint this <laughs> this weekend? And Come I was on. like, Chris, since you're not I busy. Yeah. I was like, I don't know how to do this. So, uh, we watched a couple of videos and you know what? I just went to town and over the weekend and, uh, we redid our furniture and she just happened to put it on Facebook and it was just like, um, Look what, this, we, look what did. we did over yeah. the weekend, and everybody just started going, "Oh my gosh, we do ours!" Which I was like, oh, yep. "No, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to mess up your furniture." You know? Wow! So just, uh, and it just turned into an incredible going. job. It yeah. did. Yeah. What was the most you guys made from like one flip? For oh, one project. Maybe about eight hundred dollars. Yeah. Off, nice. a, off a dresser. Good. Off a dresser. Yeah. Yep. Wow. There it is. That's so incredible. Th is this this your gig now? Well, I was no. able to step back from my job entirely. Um, he ended up getting a new job at the I beginning did. of what? Uh, December, a, a year ago. A year ago. Uh, next week. So I work for Makita. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right now. So I'm in sales. Congratulations. It's Thank awesome. You. Very yeah. cool. And you're just flipping furniture? Yes. Just and I stepped furniture. back from my job. I used to be a billing consultant for insurance companies and mm -hmm. things like that. So um, the furniture was doing so well that I was able to step back and run the furniture business instead. You mean you'd rather just run the furniture business and talk to insurance billing all yes. day? <laughs> no way. <laughs> Shocker. No yes. way. So what kind of debt was this? Oh, it was medical. All medical. All medical. Yeah. Yeah. All yep. medical. Yep. Wow. What, what, what happened? Um, when my son, when our son was three and a half, he was diagnosed with autism. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And so the treatments that were helping him mm -hmm. uh, were not covered by our insurance. Oh, wow. So we continued to take out credit cards to get him, him better. Just continue to serve and serve and serve. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and at the time we were really living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. So, and it was always like, you know, we would, we had taken the, the awesome thing about the story is right before he was diagnosed, we had taken, um, financial peace university. Yep. So we knew we were, we were there, you know, we were ready and we didn't have any debt previously. Mm -hmm. We were already ready to tackle baby yep. step number three. Yep. And then that happened. Yeah. Wow. And so getting through it, we knew what we had to do when we got to like a point where we could stop, mm -hmm. you know, and so catch what, our breath. Catch what was this yeah. point? Cause this is a while back, but 18, months yeah. ago something changed what happened that got you on this journey oh we i mean since we just knew that we had to do something it was mainly yeah. just me losing my job i right. was just like oh my gosh we've got to just cut back and we've got to get back to the dave ramsey and start doing the right. budgeting i mean at that point it's just a matter of uh we've really got to budget everything every right. penny so that, that kind of have. spooked you and you said never yes. again we're getting rid never of this again. debt right yep. never again and then going through the unemployment mm -hmm. was really like you realize the importance of having that three to six month emergency yeah. fund because oh, you yeah. just, that feeling of how are we going to put food on the table is real, you know, yeah. at, that, at that point in our life, it was just so real. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, once, once he got back on his feet and the furniture thing took off, we were like, we're going game with on this. game mm -hmm. on. So, Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, We just started baby step number four. So we're very excited. Oh, congratulations. Yes. Huge. How does it, how does it feel to breathe with a fully funded emergency? Oh, my fund? Goodness. Oh, it feels money. Great. oh it's so, it feels it's, great. it's so incredible. It is so incredible. And I, I don't mean to be dismissive here, but if you lose your job this weekend, it's going to be annoying. <laughs> It'll be yeah. annoying. Exactly. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. It'll be frustrating. Yeah. You'll get angry. It won't be catastrophic. Right. 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 Yep. Wow. Right. Oh, what a financial incredible piece. transition. Exactly. Yeah. And the neat thing is, is that we are like, I call ourselves like the king and queen of side hustles. Because yeah. we were, we are always looking for a side hustle. Yep. Like even when um, we lived paycheck to paycheck, it was like whatever we could do on the side to start chipping away at this. And then um, through furniture flipping, we were asked if we were ever thought about doing a YouTube channel. And so we started a YouTube channel about six months ago. Mm -hmm. We got monetized really quick. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. So now we make money in our sleep off of people watching. Watching us flip furniture That's online. That's so great. <laughs> yep. This story's come full circle. So yep. It's really neat. America, right? Yes, Way to go. That's, That's awesome. Right. Yes. So what do you tell people, a couple like yourselves, they've got the kids, they're, they're sitting with this debt, they feel the anxiety. What do you tell them the key to getting out of debt is? Oh, I would say don't give up. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know there's a wide range of people that are listening to this, but, um, you know, no matter where you are, if you're in baby step one or two, I know it's hard. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of us are just used to spending you know, a certain amount of money. And then all of a sudden you're in this position where you're like, I've got to just budget every single thing and it's going to be hard, you know? And, but I would just say, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to quit, but don't do it. Um, it's worth it. Uh, if you haven't gone through financial university, definitely do it. Uh, it's a small investment, but it's something that's really going to change your life. Yes. Um, I mean, like you said earlier, it's just one of those things where, I mean, a whole 
that weight is just lifted off. And I mean, each time that you make a milestone, whether it's, you know, cutting up a credit card or whatever, getting to the next baby step is just so rewarding. Um, so don't give up. It's worth it. It's incredible. And you've got the kids with you today. Bring them up here. What are their names and ages? This is Dominic. He's 13. Hey, Dominic. And this is Scarlett. And she's almost 10 next week. Incredible. Wow. And they got to watch their parents sacrifice yes. and claw, yes. get out of this debt, change their family tree, change their legacy. Yes. I love it. Well, we've got a copy of Dave Ramsey's brand new book. It's not even out yet. You get the advanced copy, awesome. Baby Steps Millionaires. That's definitely your next chapter mm-hmm. as you. you change your family tree. And we also have a copy of the Total Money Makeover that you can give to someone who says, how the heck did you do this? Right. Yes. You can say furniture flipping and Dave Ramsey. That's, That's right. right. I love it. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? You've been practicing? We're ready. ready. Let's do this thing. All right. Ready? It's Chris and Kara and Dominic and Scarlett from McKinney, Texas. $46,500 paid off in 18 months, making 80 up to 135, flipping furniture, doing the YouTube channel. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. (gasps) Three, two, one. We're We're debt-free! is where it's at. Awesome. I could do that all day long. Awesome. What an incredible couple. When in doubt, just side hustle it out. There you go. Oh they were gosh. resilient. Nothing was going to stop them. This was an incredible clip until you started rapping just then. Sorry, you're right. Usually you're the one rapping. I And I'm great. Chris and Kara just had a great story, and you tried to rhyme it up I'm here sorry, at the John, end. John, you're right. That was a downer. That's all right. Well, they, they really uh, are an incredible family. It's amazing. And what would you say? When in doubt? Side hustle it <laughs> Side out. Side hustle it out. No one's ever going to tweet that. It's never. They shouldn't. But that's Chris and Kara's story. Hey, we're proud of you guys. You're an amazing couple. What a great family. Thank you all for inspiring all of us. This is The Ramsey Show. Listening to the Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast on the Ramsey Network. Joined today by Dr. John Deloney. And uh, John, you've got a new a new thingy out that has been going. A thingy. It's been going bananas. <laughs> and a it's, a, it's a deck of cards called Questions for Humans. And here's the thing: over Thanksgiving, my wife was like, "Hey, make sure you grab a pack on your way out. That's all I want to do this Thanksgiving." I don't know what. Did you pay her for that? I did not. But they started, these cards started with um, folks writing in or calling in saying, all right, Deloney, I turned all the screens off. I'm trying to be connected to my family, whatever the heck that means. And now me and my daughters are just staring at each other in the living room. What do we do now? And I realized, man, many of us for years have been so disconnected from our families that we don't even know how to start that first conversation it sounds so trivial we've forgotten how so to connect lame. yes or we go to dinner with our boyfriend or girlfriend or with our spouse and if we're not talking about politics not talking about covid and we're not talking about our kids we don't got nothing else to talk about or with grandparents you're like god please don't mention that and with the little ones so we created a pack for families like and thinking about young kids and and grandparents and parents something to do in the car on the way home from school that's not just how's your day fine that's not a good enough answer. It's fine. Um, one for friends, just people hanging out at a bar, grabbing a drink or grab a coffee. And then we got one for couples. I love so it. So let's do one real quick. You ready? Okay, we're doing it live. All right, doing it live. This just is a true one. random selection. I'm going to choose a card from the deck. This is very dangerous. Oh, this is a fun one. What's the most overrated holiday? Oh, man. Don't hurt anyone's feelings, John. Yeah, you can't say that. I'm about to get us canceled. I don't know. What do you think it is? Uh, you know, I'm going to go Valentine's Day. 
You hate love, huh? No, I just hate the the anxiety of like the, we got to get the reservations. It's got to be on this day. You've got to do it this way. And so we just decided, you know what? Just getting a pizza and writing a card, celebrating each other is enough for us. But the the marketing around it. So let's know? go back to my original question. Why do you hate love? Oh George? my gosh. Listen, it's your turn to answer, John. What's the most overrated holiday? It's got to be like a major holiday. You can't choose some rando yeah, one. Yeah, probably Halloween. Really? Yeah. Hold on. The guy who's addicted to sugar yeah. thinks Halloween's overrated. It's because of that. It's because it's like Diabetes Appreciation Day. It's like <laughs> a it's it's a terrible holiday where we all just take one night and we're like, how about we all just die a year earlier by shoving... John's officially renamed it. Can we do one more? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we can do Before one more. Before James takes us off the air here. All right, all right I'll, you get I'll to grab choose one randomly time. here. Um... Ooh, oh, this is a tough one. Who in the room is most likely to become famous? Why? Is neither of us? Uh, neither of us. <laughs> yes. I wish Ken Coleman was here. Because he would have said himself. He would have said Ken Coleman. He would have said absolutely Ken Coleman. He's got the best shot. I think I think you have a better shot, John, because you are a uh, you know you're, you're tall, tall, handsome guy. Uh, okay, yeah. Continue. You have musical abilities. Continue. Yeah. You've got two PhDs. Keep going. Now I'm done. That's all you're getting from me. Yeah, I was going to say you, but I think that wouldn't be true. I think I'm most likely to be famous. I tried. I had a YouTube channel at 14. It didn't pan out. Didn't pan out. But here I am. So I actually think James Child is because, yeah, he's the only constant around here. <laughs> he's going to be here forever. That's right. Well, hey, these cars are really fun. I want to encourage people to uh, grab a pack for the holidays as they make the road trips. They're traveling. They're with their families. You yeah. can go to RamseySolutions.com, and you can even get the bundle, and you'll sh- uh, save a few bucks by getting all three. And they really are a lot of fun. It sparked some cool conversation. They have sold like we, I don't know, we way underestimated, way underestimated how much the demand. Yeah, how much they're helping people re-engage with their families. It's great. Pick them up. I'm one of those people who's like addicted to their screens. You know, I'm one of those millennials. I've got devices all over, (laughs) and I I realize, oh my gosh, 20 minutes went by and I didn't look at a phone, and I actually feel pretty good right now. And your body said, oh, thanks, George. It's incredible. Then you fixed it by looking at your watch and your phone and your screen. Yeah, my bad. There you go. Well, let's take some calls here. The number is 888-825-5225. Lindsay joins us in Columbia, South Carolina. Lindsay, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi, thank you so much. Thanks for taking my call. I enjoy all your podcasts. Oh, thank you so much. How can we help today? Well, I have um, a quick two-part question. Um, My husband and I, or my husband, actually has um, a really nice 2021 Dodge Ram 2500 series with a Cummings engine. (laughs) Wow. But we don't pull anything. We don't need that workhorse. We sold the camper, selling everything and getting out of debt. We are completely debt-free except our house. Way to go. And so we're wondering if we should sell that to put on that money on our house and get something. So the truck's paid for. Um, the truck is paid for. Okay, that's good news. What's left on the mortgage? He had a little windfall. He had a little windfall on some stocks and he paid cash for it. The mortgage is 145 How much is this truck worth? Um, he just got offered 52 from a dealership, so maybe Ooh. a little more. What did you guys pay for the truck? We paid, what did we pay for the truck? 50 Wow. So you can make it money on this thing and get out of it. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> hey, the only reason you're calling us, Lindsay, is because one of you wants to keep it and one of you wants to sell it. No, surprisingly, I think you should keep it. I said, you love it. It's paid for. We'll get out of the house and the mortgage debt anyway. Just keep it. But mm-hmm. he says, no, we can get there faster. Mm. What's your income? Household income? Um, about 380 380 A year? Yes, sir. Hold on. Well, this changes some things for me, John. Because if you <laughs> love the truck, keep the truck well, and I'll, pay off the house in a year. Yeah, pay off your house in six months. But more than that... Lindsay, do you realize what kind of husband you have? 99% of these calls are wives saying, my husband loves his truck more than me. I know. We're just both in a hurry to finalize our last. I mean, we owed well over $200,000 in student loans just two years ago. So we busted it. Being crushed. Yeah. How old are you two? Um, I am 59 and he is 70. And what do you do to make $300,000 a year? I'm a nurse anesthesiologist. Wow. Well done. With our own business. Very cool. Thanks. Well, I mean, you guys are at a point where it sounds like the goal of paying off the house is more important than having a sweet truck right now. 
So is that what we ask ourselves? Is that more important? I'm looking at the priorities and saying, hey, could we buy this truck again a year from now? Or let's, let's say it this way. It's a, right now, because you don't have a camper, um, you, so let's take mm-hmm. the money off the table. You, you make a jillion dollars. You've got um, no debt, and you're paying off your mortgage. And you only have 170 left on your house? 145. 145, because you're right there at the end. And he and can, we're thinking about selling that the next year. It's, he um, he it's can smell blood. 600. Your husband can smell blood. He <laughs> If he sells this thing for 50, then he's going to be under six figures on that house payment. He can just feel it. Um, so really, the question is, do you want a $50,000 toy? And you've got the money to have a $50,000 toy. Um, you got a husband saying, honey, I want to sell my $50,000 toy and buy a $20,000 toy. And I think you should let him do it. But I also think it does. I mean, it's just a, it's a values decision for you guys. Well, then the other question is that uh, we have our we don't have a, a huge um, retirement plan. We've got about um, half a million, six hundred thousand in there now. But I, of course, I have more years to work and we have about twenty thousand in just um, a brokerage account because there's maxing out. Um, my retirement. Should we take that twenty thousand out of the brokerage and throw that on the house as well? I would. Or just leave it there. Because you can, you can stock that back up real fast and be investing once that house is paid off. You free up that mortgage mm-hmm. payment. Now you've got a lot mm-hmm. of ammo as you start to save for retirement as you head into, you know, not, may, hopefully not working forever. How much is this house worth? 600 Woo! So when you say, not much, you're a millionaire, right? Well, yeah, yes, yes, it's you're a Matt. millionaire. That was a rhetorical question from John. Yes. <laughs> There's the only answer is yes. <laughs> Congratulations. So if I'm in your shoes, I'm going to cash out the brokerage account, take that 20K, throw it on the mortgage, sell this truck, get something reasonable right now. Because guess what? A year from now, you're not going to have a mortgage anymore. And you can buy a sweet truck. No, the, the mortgage just went down to 75000 then. There you go. Boom. Hey, Doesn't that feel good? Make it happen. Congratulations. Call us back when you do your debt-free scream, and we're going to be cheering for you. I'm pumped about this. I mean, I know you love a good truck, John, but... Not that much. Not that much. No. I'd rather have a paid-for house and be millionaires. All day, every day. That's what it's all about. Good hour, John. Fun times. Thank you so much for being a great co-pilot here. Thanks so much to James Childs, our producer, Ben Hill, our operating board engineer, Austin Selby, our phone screener, and you, America. We'll be back with you before you know it. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, it's The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm George Camel, Ramsey personality and host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast. And I'm joined today by my co-host, Dr. John Deloney, fellow Ramsey personality, best-selling author, and huge fan of the band Poison. There's a fun fact for you. Huge. Huge. So we're going to go to the phones this hour. It's a free call, 888-825-5225. Call us up. We'll talk life, money, relationships, mental health, whatever's on your mind. Zach joins us in Huntington, West Virginia. Zach, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello. Hey. What's up? How can we help? Uh, yeah, so I was just calling because me and my wife are kind of at a crossroads. Um, we didn't want to make it so that she could stay home with our son. We determined that's financially like impossible. We couldn't afford it. But we were wondering if it would be a wise thing to do to go part-time and be in debt for like 10 years or... At the track we're on right now, we can pay it off in two years if she works full-time and if I work full-time. 
um, uh, we were wanting to do that, get out of debt, so we could stay, so she could stay home with my son, and uh, we really want to get involved in some uh, ministry in some more economically depressed places in some rural areas. So, but we we need to be more financially stable to do that. So I was just wondering what you guys thought about that. Um, yeah, man. I mean, uh, that's a pretty wide gap. Uh, an eight years swing there who w- one of y'all wants to stay home and one of you wants to to work what, what do both of y'all want her to stay home we would i would like her to stay home and she would like to stay home okay. too but how much debt do you guys have eighty thousand dollars and what's your income um our income with her involved is one hundred thousand she makes seventy thousand she's an engineer and i'm a teacher and i make about thirty five thousand Okay. And you're saying if you guys stayed the course, both kept working, you could pay this thing off in two years? Yeah. And if she decided to stay home and you guys lost the majority of the income, it would take 10 years? Yeah. Absolutely no brainer. Y'all suck it up for two years, work like crazy. You be a teacher and then you deliver pizzas at night and then you wait tables on the weekends and you get that 30 up to 45 and you hustle and grind and get this thing done. And once you owe nobody anything and you've got some safety net, that's why I want you to hustle because I want you to go over this. I want you to get an emergency fund, and then you're going to be able to breathe. You're going to find some things out about yourself, about your marriage, and then um, let this be the the jet fuel for the next 18 to 24 months, get this stuff knocked out. And then y'all can make some decisions about what you want to do, but y'all dug yourselves a big hole, man. Y'all got to get this thing done. You don't want this hanging around for 10 years. It's going to haunt you. Mm -hmm. Are you guys doing a monthly budget right now? Uh, Yeah, we we started it up again. We had kind of fallen off the train, but we're, we're back to it. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, we, we've been doing that again and we're trying to, get a hold of our finances. Zach, can I ask you a hard question? Yeah. Um, and I need you to know my background. My mom's a teacher. My wife's a teacher. My dad's a teacher. I've been a teacher. Like that's my whole family. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, you're not going to find somebody else on the radio. That's got more respect for teachers than I do. Mm -hmm. You have a set of goals for your family. You have a picture of what you want your family to look like. Your wife does too. And that includes her staying Mm -hmm. at home raising kids and not being in the workforce. Can you mm-hmm. see that picture through at $30,000 a year? Debt free in West Virginia. It, I know people that do it. I'm not, um, I don't care about other people. I'm asking you, can you, um, can you raise your family on $30,000 a year? Um, probably not 30,000 easily. No, okay. um, I'm, I'm going to get my master's so that I can raise it up to four to closer to fifty. Okay, uh, that's that's what I was going to ask you. Is this the season when y'all have a conversation about? I know what I want to do and I know what I'm good at. Is there something inside this system, like so? Your teacher is there something like being a an assistant principal? Is there something about going into the admin side or the dark side, right? Or if I get a graduate <laughs> degree and does that help me here? Or can I adjunct classes and whatever that looks like for you? But how do you make enough money to see your family picture become a reality? Um, oh, you got yeah, a master's saying? degree is what I, I need to do. Okay. Now, if you're going to do that, you got to cash flow it. Don't, don't do all this crazy work yeah. and get out of debt and then turn around and get right back into it, right? Well, I have a, I have a scholarship to Liberty University right now. Okay. So. For your master's, the whole it, thing? But, yeah. Yeah, it's to the West Virginia Baptist Convention. Get but. it done. Get it done. Get it done. Yes, and if you can if you can put the grind in for the next two years and raise your salary, 15000 20000 bucks, do it, do it, do it. Thanks for the call, Zach. All right, let's go to Dan in San Francisco. Dan, we're running up against the clock here. Let's get right to your question. All right, real quick um, for you guys. Um, I am – um, my wife and I are debt free now for finally getting serious with everything. And I've got a question about uh, baby four, five, and six, the okay. baby steps there. Um, I'm a police officer out here in California, so I have a defined benefit pension that is based on my years of service. And it is um, not funded by my employer, but I pay 13% out of my paycheck to fund this pension. So I was just 
um, looking for some clarification on how much of that percentage do I apply to the 15% of baby step four because I got three kids coming up on college that I haven't um, started much for college savings, and I'd like to put as much to baby step five as possible. Sure. So this is a mandatory contribution from your own paycheck at 13%. That's correct. Into, a, no into a retirement option. vehicle that you don't get to control? Correct. Are you it, are you in a union? Yeah. Okay. Man. It, it's like a state pension that is um, – so it, it's all based on my years of service. The only option that I get when I retire is there's like no lump sum option. I can just pick um, how much of my pension um, I want my wife to get should I die first. Um, it, can, it can be um, a defined benefit for her going forward as well. So, th- so, so it's th- let me get this right. I, it, I, I guess in theory, but let me let me say, make sure I've got this right. A a government agency or a union agency is telling you where you have to take your money and what amount of money you have to take and put it in their vehicle, and then they're going to tell you at the end of it how you get to use it. Um. Yes. I don't How know about, lovely. About using it. Yeah, well, welcome to here's, the, here's the thing, Dan. <laughs> exactly. We're going to count that at about half. And so instead of 13%, look at it like 6.5%, which means you need to put in another 8.5% of your own money to get to that baby step for 15%. Because of what John talked about, it performs poorly. You don't have control over it. So I don't want to count that uh, in its in its full amount. So that's what we do. We count it at half. You put in another eight and a half. That'll get you to 15. And we hope that, fingers crossed, it all works out. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Guys, it's almost time for Christmas, 22 days away. And for some of you, when you hear that word, you just think of stress. How you're going to pay for presents, the bigger grocery bills, and all the other stuff. But it doesn't have to be that way. When you have a plan for your money, you'll have confidence even when everything else seems out of control. And that plan is Financial Peace University. You'll learn step-by-step how to get out of debt, save money, and build wealth. In fact, the average household saves $2,700 and pays off $5,300 in debt in just the first 90 days. And right now, FPU is only available in a Ramsey Plus membership. You don't have to live with a stressed out Christmas year after year. Make 2022 the year you finally start winning with money. Get started today, or you can give FPU as a gift by visiting RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. That's RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. I'm George Camel, joined today by Dr. John Deloney, and you are listening to The Ramsey Show. Open phones this hour, 888 5225 Give us a call, and we would be happy to talk about what's on your mind. Jason joins us in Tallahassee, Florida. Jason, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hey, George and Dr. John. Thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. How can we help? Okay, so uh, my wife and I have 13 years. We had... We had three houses together. We each had one before we met, and we bought one together. We just sold the one that we bought together, and we made a handsome profit. And I'm kind of wondering what to do with that cash. And here's kind of the conundrum. Um, My house is paid for. Her house is not. And her ex-husband is responsible for paying her note by their divorce agreement. 
So she wants to just keep all this money in savings, and I'm thinking there's got to be something better we can do with it. Hmm. How long have y'all been married? Uh, 13 years. 13 years? I don't hear a lot of couples who've been married 13 years still referring to her house and my house. Tell me how that well, works. Just, I mean, we've never, we've never consolidated. We, I owned my house outright before we met. And she was supposed to own her house outright when she got divorced. Uh-huh. Um, and we've just left them in each of our names. I, I actually live at her house. I rent my house out. And all of our uh, all of our bank accounts are joint. The only thing that's not joint is the titles on these houses. Would it change your psychology in your home if you referred to these homes as y'all's homes and suddenly you've got another well, we guy? Kinda, you know what I mean? We do. We do, and, and I actually suggested that we just pay hers off. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we've got you know two hundred k sitting in the bank right now. Is her ex husband still living in it? Owed on her house. Yeah, I'm living in it. So is she? <laughs> no, no, no. Is her ex husband still living in it? Oh no, he's got his own place. But he's paying the mortgage as part of the divorce agreement. Yeah, she was supposed to get the house outright, and he's not on the day's plan of paying it off in any big hurry. And you guys are living and there. she wants to – we're living there. She wants to let him keep paying it as long as he will, but he's sort of running a failing business. Dude, sell the house and get out of that mess. This feels like a weird situation. The ex-husband is it, it paying is little, for it, where you're living. That, yeah, and the house is in her name. Sell it. The sell it. in her name, but, sell there's, it. but there's still a note on it. <laughs> S- sell it. Get out of the mess. Get her ex-husband uh, – stop paying your rent. Get out of it. Yeah, I mean, like, you got to change your, like, your house and my house and then our house. Bro, you've got three houses. Y'all are married for 13 years. You, all, your family has three houses. Start using that language. And then. Well, two at this point. Okay, okay like two. We just yeah, there you one. go. You just sold one. So I am not going <laughs> to so live I, in I a house. I could get her husband out of it. I could get her husband out of it by just paying it off. And her take on it is that lets him off the hook for what she is owed. And she's playing a 13-year game of vengeance, and all, all she's doing is killing herself slowly. I, I don't care what you got to do, man. Get that guy out of your life. You got to pay the house off, sell the house, and move into the other house. Sell that house and take all that cash and buy y'all a house together that's new for whatever you got to do, man. Get that guy out of your life. What's the what's left on the no, mortgage? I'm with you on that. Go ahead. What's left on the mortgage? 108. And you have 200 in the bank. Correct. Which means if you paid it off today, you'd have 92,000. Does that include your emergency fund and everything? Uh, no, I've still got an extra emergency fund over that. I'm fully invested in my traditional IRA. I don't have a Roth. I need to do that. Well, what I would do, um, is, I, it, like John's saying, if you pay that thing off, you've got 92 sitting in the bank that you can do anything with, and you have a paid-for house, you don't have a payment in the world, then you can decide, hey, do we want to get into more real estate? Do we want to be in the real estate business and get some more properties? What do we want to do with this money? And have, you could max out your retirement accounts. Have you ever had cancer? No. Okay. You do. You have a cancer. And you can solve that cancer with $100,000. If I'm you in your financial situation, I would do that for the days over. And that man's name would be Voldemort in my home, and we would just be done saying it. Jason, what happens if he can't pay the mortgage? You said he has a failing business. Let's say he can't make the payment. Doesn't that put you well, guys at risk? The, that's the point. We have enough cash to, to – but she wants it to just sit in a savings account just in case he can't pay it. She wants to punish him. Get him out of your lives. Let him go. Let him go. Be Let free. Him go. He, hey, you know what? He drug it out for 13 years. He won. Golf clap. Congratulations, man. You beat the system. High five. Way to go. We're rich. We got lots of money. We're baby steps millionaires. And I'm cutting my wife's ex-husband out of our life forever. I'm going to live in my house that does, doesn't even have a note on it. And my, ex, my wife's ex-husband is no longer going to pay my mortgage. That's the move. Thanks out. for the call, Cut Jason. Cut the cancer out. Interesting situation. All right, Sean joins us next in Atlanta, Georgia. Sean, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, all right, it's good to be here. How can we help? How are you doing? Um, I'm just kind of confused about what I need to be doing with my uh, finances in the next couple months. Uh, 
I'm actually joining the Marine Corps in shipping out in January. Congratulations, and, uh, brother. Way to go, man. Up. Thanks for your service. Oh, no, thank you. It's, a, it's an honor. Uh, I just kind of am curious about what your opinion is on what I should do with the, my savings that I've kind of just held in the bank account for a while. Okay, how much savings are we talking? Um, between six and 8000 Okay, and is that all the money to your name? No, sir. I do have uh, a little bit in uh, stocks and uh, stuff like that. but Just like lot. single stocks? Yes, sir. Okay. And how old are you? Uh, 21. 21. And you don't have any debt? No, sir. Have you saved up an emergency fund? Yes, I have. So that's outside of the six to 8000 Yes, sir. Okay. Dang, man. Way to go, you're dude. 21 it, dude. years old. You're doing better than most of America. Yeah. So way to go. And you're wondering, what do I do with the six to 8000 while I'm in the military so that it can grow for me? Yes, sir. How much do you have in the single stocks and all that? Um, about about three to four thousand. Okay. Well, the single stocks worry me a little bit because of the volatility and the risk there. I would rather have you in some good growth stock mutual funds that are diversified with hundreds of stocks. And so, if I'm you, before I join the military, I'm going to cash those stocks out and I'm going to park it with my savings. And you, if it's going to be, how long are you going to be in the military for? A uh, five-year term uh, as of right now. Okay. Well, with that kind of time horizon, you can put your money in the market, but I would not do it in single stocks. I would park it in some good growth stock mutual funds, diversified across four types. That's what I personally do. And uh, you can work with a SmartVestor Pro to do that at RamseySolutions.com. Get connected with one in your area, in the Atlanta area, before you head out. And that way you'll have, what, almost $12,000 that can be growing for you over five years in some great mutual funds. And you might have a rate of return of, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12% while you're gone and you come back to a big pile of money. How's that sound? All right. It sounds great to me. Thank and you. When, and when you get out, give yourself a month before you go buy a big Jeep, my brother. All my buddies get out of the military and go get a big Jeep. Just wait. Make sure you got the cash. Dude, 21 years old. You got your whole life ahead of you. This guy's crushing Way to it. go. Thanks for your sacrifice. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000, all thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. You're listening to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast, joined today by my co-host, Dr. John Deloney. You know, John, we get a lot of questions lately about cryptocurrency. Yeah, it's cool, man. It's all the rage. Yep. And we actually dove deep into this on the Fine Print Podcast with a 30-minute episode called Could Bitcoin Be Your Ticket to Wealth? And it was fascinating as we dug into it. And my takeaway in the podcast is this. I'm not mad at cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. I'm not against it. No, man. I think it's all valid, but there's a time and place you should be dabbling in it. There's a right way to do it right. so you don't screw up your financial future. And uh, this article that I came across is fascinating. It's from WTOP, local news in Washington, D.C. And here's the headline that grabbed me. Can you buy cryptocurrency with a credit card? Oh, hooray. 
<laughs> the answer, spoiler alert, is yes. Yes. And uh, this is what um, one of the financial professionals here that's interviewed, Steve Larson. He's a co-founder of Planner Dow, cryptocurrency education community for financial planners. He actually teaches classes on this stuff. Hmm. And they said much of the chagrin of some financial prof- professionals. And here's what he said. If you wouldn't buy shares of Apple stock on your credit card, you shouldn't be pitting, putting Bitcoin on your card either. Yet many people do so every day. And so the article goes on to talk about how depending on your card issuer and the cryptocurrency exchange platform, you can, in fact, use a credit card, go into debt to buy cryptocurrency. This is frightening times we live in, John. Wow. You can't just buy single stocks on a credit card. You can use imaginary money to buy imaginary pieces of imaginary money. My mind just exploded. Is that incredible or what? Incredible in a bad way. Yeah. This is frightening. Wow. And here's what it turns out to be. There are so many fees involved with this process. Uh, CoinMama is one of the exchange platforms where you can do this. You can use your credit card to buy it. And they charge a transaction fee based on the market rate, which can fluctuate, mm-hmm. plus 2%. They also have a commission of up to 3.9% and an additional 5% fee if you choose to buy with a credit card. So let's say you want to buy $1,000 worth of crypto. Well, you're going to pay $109 in fees alone. Yeah. Only to possibly lose it all anyways. So he, here's what it feels like to me. Um, if I'm the average person at home, I'm hearing about crypto, I'm hearing about it, I'm hearing about it. I'm looking at some of the world's wealthiest men and women saying, dude, you got to get in on this, get in on this. I've created my own. I've created my own. I got my own platform. My platform's got a fee. Does your platform have a fee? Well, my platform, I'm talking to you. I'm just feeling like I'm getting behind. Like everybody's got a smartphone without, except for me, everybody's got a car with gas and I'm still in my horse. Right. And so they're making it easier and easier and easier for us. And we're feel, we're feeling like we're missing more and more out on things. I love going back to, man, nobody's hating on crypto going back to, if you're, if you're trying to buy crypto as a hedge against a monetary policy, that's when you're bonkers. That's a whole other phone call. But, but if you wouldn't buy stock, if you wouldn't go invest in your friend's company on a credit card, like if you wouldn't make that kind of nonsensical move, don't buy imaginary money using imaginary money. Well said. On top of that, this is fascinating too, the card issuer, so the credit card company, on top of all those fees I mentioned, they treat this as a cash advance. And so that comes with much higher interest rates and a 5% cash advance fee. And so they go on to talk about the pros and cons, and hilariously, this is one of the pros they mention. You can invest without having the cash on hand. That's, That's a not recipe. Real. That is a recipe for a financial disaster. That's gambling on a credit card. If you wouldn't go to Vegas on well, people go to Vegas on credit cards all the time. So I don't hate Vegas. Well, at least Vegas. Vegas is entertaining. There you go. But they also mentioned this is a pro. You can potentially earn rewards on your investment. You can get credit card rewards, John. <laughs> I can buy crypto and get miles. Dude, fantastic. This is genius. We're hacking the system. So listen, if you feel like you are missing out. And you don't have, you may be, let's be, you may be, but if you don't have money, you can't afford it. John, that hurt my feelings. I know it does. And you only have three of them left. <laughs> I only have so many left, That's John. Right. Don't buy something you have no money to buy it. They do close in a way that makes me happy here. They talk about this. Crypto is already a volatile investment. And by purchasing it with, with credit, as in money you don't actually have, it's a sign you can't really afford to lose that money. This is from the news? They're actually saying this. Way to go, news! If your crypto investment loses value, it compounds those losses. And it ends with this great quote from Steve, who they interviewed. I have found most people who purchase crypto on credit aren't focused on building a portfolio. They're trying to reduce their exposure to their least favorite asset class, FOMO. FOMO. That's a mic drop from Steve Larson. Way to go, Steve. Don't let fear of missing out plunge you into debt. Don't do this. I'm not mad at crypto. If you want to do it, and here's what we tell people, John, get out of debt, have a fully funded emergency fund, be investing 15% into retirement. That means 401ks, IRAs, things rooted in reality. Mm -hmm. And then if you've got some fun money that you want to spend, you want to take a hundred bucks and buy some Doge or Ethereum or Bitcoin, or you want to take a thousand bucks and that's money you're willing to lose. As in, if you set that on the table and lit it on fire, you wouldn't be too sad. Mm -hmm. You go, well, we had fun. That's like Vegas, right? You bring 200 bucks to Vegas, you play some slots, you go home. But it's when people get in over their heads and it becomes obsessive. I mean, this is a hobby. This is and you get more expensive than golfing. Yeah, you get over leveraged and it gets frightening. Yeah. So do it the right way. 
don't have the FOMO, have what I like to call JOMO, the joy of missing out. I love not investing in crypto. How long did it take you to come up with JOMO? A few years. That's so it's a work in progress. Not great. It's not, not great. great. All right. You're really a talented I'm guy. I'm over for two today, John. That wasn't great. I thought we were having a good time, but turns out... No, we were having a great time until you JOMO'd the whole segment. All right. Well, that's crypto for you, folks. Open phones this hour, 888 5225 We're happy to take your calls on life, money, relationships, whatever you want to talk about. Ethan joins us from the great state of Texas. Ethan, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm really excited to talk to you guys. Yeah. Um, so really quick, the question I have is, should I be looking to pick up a side gig or a side hustle um, in the next few months, a uh, couple, little bit of background. My wife and I are expecting our first in January. So Congrats! Way that. to go! Yeah, yep. So it's going to be a little boy. We're excited. Um, the other thing is, my wife is stopping work for the baby, obviously, and she's also transitioning her career right now uh, into real estate. So probably, you know, Q one, Q two of next year, she'll start in real estate. Um, and yeah, and the other thing is. We're on baby step three, and we need about 15000 and we only have about 2000 right now. And I'm going to be on parental leave for about 12 weeks once the baby's here. So what do you guys think? Uh, man. Have you sat down and talked to your wife about this? Yeah, we've talked about it. She's open to the idea, but um, I guess doesn't want to detract too much from like the attention we're going to need to have here at home. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's kind of on the fence. We're, we're both on the fence a little bit. I usually recommend to folks who are about to have their first kid and the house isn't on fire and your house is not on fire. You do want to get out of debt. You're working a plan. Uh, you are out of debt. I'm sorry. You want to build an emergency fund, right? Yep. Yeah. So things, things are urgent, but they're not on fire. Um, man, you think, you know, what's about to happen. You got no idea on, and not in a bad way in 20 different ways. You think you know what not being tired is? You got no idea. You think you know what love is? You got no idea. You think you know what frustration is? Dude, you you know what I'm saying? So um, you think you love your wife now? You It's just an amazing process. And so I think, man, having the conversation, having the ideas, um, setting up the plan. Do you have a side hustle in mind? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, they're hiring like crazy everywhere to even just like deliver pizzas. Yep. Um, we're, we're doing DoorDash right now for fun. That's like 15 an hour after like gas and stuff. So, Absolutely. I mean, Can you pick up some, some holiday work things. before baby gets here? Yeah, I certainly could. I guess like uh, putting up lights and stuff like that for people. Well, even just seasonal good. seasonal work at retailers. Yeah. I mean, people are paying big money right now just to get you to get right. through Christmas. So if I'm you, I'm doing everything I can right now to hustle. Before the baby's here, I'm working my tail off for like the next a maniac. month and a half. Yeah. And save up. Right now, you're in, you're in stork mode. So we're not trying to build this up. We're going to put this aside, make sure baby's safe, mom's safe. And then we can go, all right, this has now become our emergency fund and not the baby fund. But way to go, man. We're happy for you. Good luck getting that emergency fund in place. You got this. This is The Ramsey Show. comes from Luke 11, 13. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Henry Wadsworth Longfellow said, give what you have. To someone, it may be better than you dare to think. Lisa joins us in Roanoke, Virginia. Lisa, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Thank you. Hey, gentlemen. How can we help today? So, I am one of five siblings. 
Our oldest brother passed away in late October um, oh, from COVID. I'm so sorry. Sorry to hear that. And thank you. Mm-hmm. So we are, um, we're sad, we're emotional, we are very angry at a situation that happened um, during his hospitalization with his girlfriend. And um, I'm the executor of the will, and I have the full support of my siblings and our spouses. But I just want um, to make sure that because we're so emotional, that we have healthy boundaries and that we're not acting out of revenge and yet are being good stewards. We want to have biblical principles, um, but it's all a bit confusing right now. Yeah. So my brother and his girlfriend had dated about nine years. About two years ago, she moved into his home, but they never combined finances, and he is the only name on the deed. Um, to the house and on the mortgage, and she is not mentioned in his will. Um, They have had a rocky relationship for the whole nine years. They just um, fought like teenagers, had horrible boundaries. Um, They would not speak for days. One of them would leave and go stay with somebody else. They tracked each other on their phones, just Things that the rest of our siblings were concerned about. We mentioned it. My brother-in-law liked the relationship. And honestly, they never brought many of their problems to our family gatherings. And we loved them both. We actually enjoyed being with them. There were lots of good times. But we knew the relationship was not one that any of the rest of us would have wanted. Sure. During the last two weeks when my brother was in the hospital, um, The girlfriend got angry over um, some of my female friends texting encouragement to him. Um, She said some really ugly things. She got mad over a niece taking clothes to my brother instead of her daughter. Um, Just childish squabbles. She said horrible things to him, did some horrible things with their security cameras, um, wouldn't let him have access to electronics. She was monitoring his social media um, to the point where he wanted to end the relationship. He was sobbing to um, our husbands, our children, some of his friends. And individually and collectively, my siblings and I had decided that we didn't want her to be a part of our family gatherings if when when if we were hoping at the time that he would recover mm-hmm. and we were we knew from the history that there was a good chance he would forgive her and we needed to have a tough conversation with him about our new boundaries mm-hmm. but he didn't recover and on the day he passed he asked to see several of us and her and he told us that he had forgiven her and it didn't matter why she'd done what she did Mm-hmm. But we still don't want to have anything to do with her, and I. She doesn't seem to want to have anything to do with us. Sure. But we have to deal with her because there's a house she's still living in the home. Sure. Um. So I don't want to be mean, but I want to do the right thing. Sure. So number one, um, I'm heartbroken for your loss. Um, I can tell it's heavy on you and your family, and what a mess. I want an unexpected yeah. pass. Um, Thank you. I'm going to say something that I hope isn't controversial. I don't mean for it to be. I've just walked alongside people in this situation. Um, grief and watching a loved one slowly slip away makes people do things they wouldn't normally do. Makes them say things they would normally say. Makes them react in ways that is just out of character. Um. Yeah. And so I, I I tend to be real forgiving in those situations because for you, she's girlfriend. She's basically been his wife for 10 years and their relationship was way different than yours. But it's the one your brother chose over and over and over right. again. And he so did, definitely. What, what I think's hard to not do is to go back and retroactively judge his relationship and then determine what you think the right thing to do is based on your interpretation of his relationship. At the end of the day, he chose this 
quasi marriage, even though they weren't married, but they acted like it. They played it for a decade. And they did. So I, I think to, if I'm you, I'm not going to carry that, the stuff that happened in the hospital. I'm going to let it go because it's going to, it's going to impact my grief and my memories of my brother. And I'm not going to give that power to her. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to give her that power. Then I'm going to say, what would my brother want me to do with the estate? What would be the best way to honor what my brother told me, even on his deathbed? What's the best way I can honor my brother with his, as a steward of his, of his finances? And that's a hard, hard thing. What did he leave you guys? Probably nothing financially. Okay. Um, Ironically, three of us are everyday – well, three of us are debt-free, including the mortgage, mm-hmm. and the two older of us are everyday millionaires. Um, one, one of us is not quite out of a mortgage, but we're all stable, and his finances were totally opposite. So we, we expect – that the house is fully mortgaged and there sure. was a car payment and some medical debt, but we don't have that information. Okay. Um, and so, the girlfriend has not wanted to provide it yet. So if is the will going to probate? It will have to. Okay. Yes. So it's y'all go to probate. Yet, y- but it's in route. Y'all will work all that through. Here's what I would recommend. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to say something that's hard. Okay. Y'all are, this isn't about money. This no, is about not. this is about anger. And this is about yep. hurt. And I can't tell you what a blessing it is to talk to you because you know that you are grieving hard and you want to do the right thing not through the not through a lens of grief but through a lens of compassion and what my brother want. And that's such an honorable thing for you to it's raining on you and you're still walking towards a path of integrity. It's, it's what an honor. Okay. Um, I would sit down cause this isn't about money. This is about, um, y'all don't like her and she really screwed up in the hospital and she made the last few weeks yeah. of your brother's life hell for y'all and you'll have to live with it. Yeah. Um, the question you'll have to ask yourself is, is it worth taking her home away? The home that they shared for a decade or for two years right. or five years away is and there's no money to be exchanged here, right? It's not like you're you're not having a million dollars. I'm trying to discuss here. It's a matter of saying. I don't. I don't even think we can keep the home. Well, um, but it, it, is there, there? There's probably going to be a common law uh, situation here where she's going to have a claim no. to it, and if she can make the payment, you know what I mean? There, I'm sure that will pop not up. Not in our state. Oh, not in your state. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, can I ask you? Let me ask you this. What do you think the right thing to do is? As hard as it might be, what's the right thing to do? Well, what I think we would have done if the last two weeks hadn't happened is we would be grieving together with her, her included, and we would be helping her make a plan to move in four or five months when the will's out of probate and we know what the financial situation is. So here's going to be a, my recommendation. My recommendation is you reach out to her and you say that. And say the last two weeks were a mess and we're heartbroken. We're willing to walk alongside you if you want us. And she can say no and then you dust your hands off and you move to the next town. But that's what I would do. Beautifully said, John. So sorry, sorry for your loss, season. Lisa. So sorry for your loss. Sorry for what you're going through. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. Thank you so much to my co-host, Dr. John Deloney, our producer, James Childs, Ford engineer, Ben Hill, and our phone screener, Austin Selby. We'll be back with you before you know it. This is The Ramsey Show. Have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts.